Hey, welcome back to the show. Today I'm going to be sharing 25 behaviour management tips that you can use in your classroom. So if you're new to early years or key stage one, or just looking for some new techniques, stay tuned. Just before I start, I want to put a disclaimer in to say that there are mixed opinions on the different approaches and strategies you can use with your class. For example, whether you agree with the timeout sanction or prefer to address behaviour with a time in approach, these are all up for debate. Another example might be that you find reward charts really successful, but low stickers and certificates. There are always new case studies and research that will support and disagree with your choices and I've found it's all about finding what works for you, your children, your own teaching personality and the ethos that you want from your setting. We all have our own personal preferences and even the delivery of the same technique can vary among practitioners. I've seen some behaviour techniques that I wouldn't do myself that other practitioners deliver superbly well and it works for them and their children. So my list is definitely not the ultimate final list and I'm sure there will be some things that you may agree or disagree with but these are my tried and tested techniques that I have seen work in my daily practice. Some of the tips have been noted in feedback from other professionals in my lesson observations and things I have developed over time. I hope you find a couple of ideas in here that you can personalise and use. The first tip is using Class Dojo, which is a free website where you can create a visual reward chart for your class. You can use the monster icons for each child or upload a photo. You can customise what they get points for and choose to reward the whole class or an individual child. I particularly like to use it to raise the profile of a particular rule for the day. For example, I might say, oh, today I'm looking for good sharing and I'll be avoiding three points for sharing. There's also an option for negative points if you wish and also a function to keep parents in the loop with their behaviour through their own logins. At this early stage in children's development, bad behaviour and testing the boundaries are all part of their personal, emotional and social development. And our classroom with its different rules, adults, routines and friendships is the perfect environment for children to explore and reflect upon their and others' behaviour. I like to use a cut and stick activity when discussing behaviour. The children have to sort the behaviours into two columns with a happy or a sad face. It helps open up a conversation about different behaviours. I'll put a link to the free download in the description of the video and on my website. I also recommend stories that explore behaviour such as Moppy which provide children with another opportunity to discuss right and wrong alongside this activity. I've put some recommended Amazon linked books in the video description that explore different scenarios, feelings and behaviours. Sometimes children present attention seeking behaviour by purposely not doing the correct things to try and get me to mention their name and talk to them. I especially find this true when working alongside a small group of children and one wants to take over and monopolise my time. I find positive reinforcement is a great tool in this situation, so rather than addressing what is wrong, I ignore the negative and point out what children are doing that is correct next to the misbehaving child. Wow Emily, you're sitting nicely. Well John, you're trying to hold your pencil correctly. Well Ian, you're keeping your hands to yourself. What a great example you are to the class. Who else can I see who's doing that? I usually find that the others around the child you have praised, including the attention seeking child, then try to copy this behaviour. It's less confrontational and allows children to learn that they get noticed for doing the right things. When I want their attention at an adult led session such as phonics, I might assign jobs to children who are sitting nicely by saying, I'm looking for someone who is sitting ready, who is looking, they can fetch the pens. I'm going to pick someone who is showing me their best listening to turn the page. To bond the group and praise the whole class, you could always use a glass jar and tell the children that each time they work together as a group, you'll add a marble or a cube. When introducing this, you can decide with your class what they want as their reward. When the jar's full, it might be lollipops in the summer or a little class party. Funny phrases are great to reward children. Here are a few. Put your hands out, turn them around and pat yourselves on the back. Give yourself a marshmallow clap. Give yourself a pirate, well done. Arr. Give him a super thumbs up. Give him a karate cheer, chop, 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 chop. Or a disco cheer, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Or a cheese and grater. 
your great 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 or an alligator clap one two three chomp and then children will do these in unison towards the child that you've praised to build links with parents, I like to use these little notes that go home on a daily basis. They basically say something positive. For example, I might write, Today I noticed that John was sharing the blocks of his friends. It helps parents reinforce the positive behaviour at school and become part of the team celebrating this achievement. Also, these are useful for setting mini targets such as, Today John was practising writing the letter A. We worked together to make sure he went anti-clockwise. See if you can show your parents how you write it. If I need the children to be super quiet for a task, I use Mousy. This is Mousy. He only sits on the children's table that is as quiet as a mouse. And I will ask, often ask Mousy who he can see that is being a super worker and he whispers in my ear and tells me. Mousy is a great reminder to some children if you ask them to do a challenge but you want them to do it quietly. You can always send them away with Mousy or have a particular child holding Mousy for good listening. Certificates are a great way to reward achievement in all areas and if you want to find a quick online certificate maker to use visit senteacher.org and from here you can customise your certificates very quickly. You can even import a list of names and it will mail merge onto each certificate. For even more impact think about how these will be delivered. Could, could a visiting teacher, a visiting police officer or a guest from the community hand these certificates out? If you are a professional singer you wouldn't go and sing a concert without warming up and looking after your voice, yet as teachers we're constantly using our voice. A study from Voice Care UK found that teachers are eight times more likely to suffer from voice health conditions than other professions. Newly qualified teachers are at even more risk with 50% suffering voice loss in their first year of teaching. My classroom is usually noisy and noise isn't necessarily a bad thing. In the early years it shows that children are busy, engaged, excited, but on the flip side, it's too tempting to raise my voice to get their attention over their drumming, den building, screams, shouts, especially outside. So if you're getting too loud and you're having to raise your voice too much, have a tambourine or a bell. Get all the children to stop. Train them to put down what's in their hands. They have to wiggle their fingers with me so I know they've put everything down. Or another technique is to wait by putting your hand up and just wait until all the children stop and copy you. You could clap a rhythm that has a response. You could sing a song like, everybody do this, do this, do this, everybody do this just like me. You could say macaroni and cheese and they all say everybody freeze. You could say one, two, three, eyes on me and the children say one, two, three, eyes on you. One thing I used to do a lot of when I first started teaching was ask instead of tell and with some children this kind of approach works well. With others, it can confuse children into thinking they were given a choice, especially children with special educational needs or second language children. For example, I might say, would you like to come and read your words with me? And of course, the children will say in their nicest voice, no, and walk off. Well, from their perspective, I did give them a choice. So instead of saying this, I change it to, it's time to come and read your words. Another way I like to increase the clarity of my instruction is to simplify it as some children can't cope with a two-step instruction such as get your bag and then find your reading packet. I'll give the child a simple checklist to follow. I also recommend visual fans as a way to be clear with children who may not have English as their first language. I'll link in my video when I visited a specialist teaching shop and explored the SCM resources for the classroom because in there I talk about the communication fans. Have you ever heard of a child burger? Basically, when you give children carpet spaces or ask them to line up, I will put a misbehaving child in between two sensible children making a burger, which helps them be around children that won't encourage their negative behaviour. It's useful if you have more than one child in your class that can be silly and this stops them arguing, winding up each other or being generally disruptive. On the point about carpet spacing, I would also say it's nice to lay them into a particular place. It stops squashing. You can put children with poorer eyesight near the front. I pair them up so each of them has a talking partner. So instead of them trying to call out all the time, I can say to them, tell your partner the answer. I rotate their partners throughout the year in different sessions. I'll also put some children in particular places so extra staff members can support them with questioning prompts, pre-learning and reminders. 
I prefer to have small carpet groups if possible because I find the larger the group, the harder it is to keep the children engaged. If you see them starting to rock, it means they've been on the carpet for too long. If you're doing a longer task and you need the children to take a quick break, I recommend a brain break. You could ask them to rub their tummy and tap their head and swap. Or you could try this one which is show me your thumb and your little finger. Then swap your little finger and your thumb. Your thumb and little finger, your little finger and your thumb. This gives children a gap and it refreshes them before refocusing back on the task. Tidy Up Time is an invaluable learning experience where children take ownership of the classroom, showing they care and can be responsible. The problem is that this can also be an opportunity for some children to misbehave. Some children will be able to independently move around the classroom looking for things to tidy, but for some, this organised chaos, and I have a lot of that in my classroom, can be too overwhelming. I recommend directing them to a particular area to tidy. As well as children struggling with where to tidy, some children will completely ignore you and continue with their play. I usually go over and ask them, what have I asked you to do? They can usually tell me, and I said tidy up and quickly scoot off to help, but by asking the question rather than telling them to tidy up, I have prompted them to reflect upon their behaviour. To help keep this a calm experience, I've written a song that you can use and the children have to tidy up before it's finished. It's about a minute and a half. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link to this video should be appearing above on the card icon and you can watch it after this video. A consistent approach by all the team is really important as it only takes one staff member to undo the ethos of the setting by disciplining a child in a way that's not fitting with your chosen approaches. This can be especially true if sometimes you are allowing the children time to sort out an issue by themselves and you're supporting from a distance so that they don't rely on you. The last thing you want is for another staff member to step in and tell off the children as this can undo the learning experience and not allow the children time to reflect, develop and communicate their own feelings to their peers. A quick approach I use is called reflective questioning where all staff members try to follow the simple flowchart to address behaviour. Check out my reflective questioning video for more info. Of course, you can customise this to your setting, but it's a nice quick starting point for consistency. Using positive phrasing is useful. If I said to you, close your eyes, but whatever you do, don't think of an elephant. Most of us would have a little thought about an elephant, and this goes the same for some children. When we hear words, it can, be, it can stick in their heads. So instead of saying, don't run, I'd say, please walk, don't hit, have kind hands. When writing class rules, we like to reverse the phrasing so it's always positive. So don't snatch would be take turns. Don't shout would be use your inside voice. Don't push in the line would be line up nicely. Don't be late would be arrive on time. Don't interrupt would be listen to others. Separating the behaviour from the child is really important. When talking to a child about their behaviour, I'm careful to not say bad boy but that you have had bad behaviour. It stops them feeling labelled and separates them from their action. For some children it can be self-fulfilling if they think they are the naughty child and they will try and live up to it rather than see that often they have just made a series of wrong decisions in between good ones. I love stickers, especially the scented or personalised ones, but I think it's important to not overuse them as I believe children should be proud through many forms of praise. I think genuine and sincere praise from adults is the most powerful tool we have. Saying fantastic or saying well done shows them how proud I am of them and their actions. I don't want to create an environment where children just work to get a sticker. I want an ethos of autonomous learning where children interact because they see on a simple level what they need to do to improve and that practice makes perfect. You might want to make a classroom display that is either visual with maybe traffic lights or zones that the children move up or down. Some children respond well to this and they could get a prize if they reach the top tier and if they go to the bottom you might have planned out a sanction that happens. Countdowns are a good way of moving from one activity to another and help get everyone onto the next task without a few loitering children. I would say I want to see everybody ready by the time I count down from 10. You could use a visual timer, one on the electric whiteboard, or maybe you'd sing a song and you'd expect everyone to be there by the end. I've recorded a song that I play for my class when I want them to sit on the carpet. There's a link in the description. As you know, as teachers, the power of our voice is key. 
just by talking with excitement or a little whisper can be used to great effect. Sometimes I'll just start talking very quietly and I want everyone to listen to my instructions. Peer assessment is a powerful tool in the classroom. I like to ask children to assess others' behaviour. So I would say, boys, I want you to watch the girls go and get their whiteboards. I'm going to ask you to tell me someone when they return who you spotted that was amazing. Okay girls, off you go. And while we watch, I would then narrate over the top. Oh, I can see Joanne is walking sensibly and calmly. She's fetching her board and coming back down. Well done. Then I ask a couple of the boys to pick someone. The children respond well to this. Then I swap around and say, girls, I want you to watch the boys now. This is also great if you have children who are competitive and you want to play a game where you say, I'm going to give a merit or I'm going to give a point to the children who do this the best. Sometimes a pause can be powerful. If teaching a class of older children and they ignore me, and they won't stop talking even after I've given them a bit of a teacher stare and the pause is there. I don't raise my voice, I just add a mark on the board and each mark represents a minute I'm waiting and is taken away from their break time. I then get the class to earn this back throughout the lesson. This helps when some children who don't care about your authority but they don't want to be the child that lets down their class to lose the playtime. Usually I only need to do this once and then just the threat of me saying, oh dear, I might have to get my pen out and put a mark on the board, usually creates pure silence across the room. Sometimes during your teaching, it can be very distracting to keep stopping to address behavior. So one tip I do so that I don't lose my flow is to just ask one child to move to the front. This usually stops the child doing the wrong thing for a moment and then you can speak to them at the end of the session rather than allow them to monopolise your attention and disrupt your delivery. With the children being so young, any kind of direct teaching is limited to their attention span and if they have been waiting for you to discipline a child, you might have lost those precious few minutes of teaching time. Returning back to the point I said about self-fulfilling prophecy and how we need to allow children the chance to realise their mistakes and make the right choices so they don't think of themselves as naughty or always misbehaving. Have a think about giving them genuine responsibility and opportunities to succeed. In Philip Beadle's television programme The Unteachables, he worked alongside teenage children with major behavioural problems that were affecting their learning. One of the approaches he used was to get them to become helpers to younger children. Some of the children really shone through this experience and didn't even think about misbehaving because they were too busy with the responsibility of looking after the young kids who looked up to them for help. As draining as some children's behaviour can be on a daily basis, and as hard as it is, we do need to keep resetting and forgiving children, giving them fresh days, or for some it's even giving them a fresh morning and a fresh afternoon, so that they have a chance to start again with their behaviour. Could they have a time to read to a younger child in another class? Could they, have a ch could they be the person that turns the lights on and off? Could they be the library monitor or have a special job in the morning? Allow them the chance to shine. And yes, sometimes they will fail, but we know that we gave them a chance. We trusted them, believed in them, and we allowed them a platform to succeed. My final tip is for a child that's not responding to a lot of the other approaches here. And they maybe need a much more focused plan on top of the classroom rules. So here's a simple chart that I've used. I'll put a download in the description below to help them improve their behaviour. So working alongside their parents or deciding a weekly reward and a score that they need to reach. Beginning each day, the child has a one-to-one -one where they talk about their behaviour targets and they're reminded of how to succeed. At the end of each session, they bring their chart and I choose, or whoever's looking after them chooses, whether they have a happy or a sad face linked to those targets. Make sure that even if they have a bad day, that the target number is still achievable by the end of the week. That you wouldn't want them to have had sad faces on a bad Monday and now look and go, oh, I can't earn enough to win by the end of the week, there's no point. The main emphasis should not be on the sad faces, but on the happy faces. We're looking to value those happy faces, not just dwell on the sad ones. The targets for the child are linked to those happy faces. And it's the same for if they have any other misbehavior in the classroom, you need to kind of use the chart just for the targets that you have set. So they might have a bad behavior in another area, but I would 
treat that separately to this chart. This chart is linked specifically to the key targets from that week. If I find that there's maybe something I want to change on the Friday to the next week, I can add that in then. Each class we teach comes with our own challenges and some approaches work with one child and not with another. Don't get disheartened if you're finding it difficult, we all do. Just keep looking and trialing different approaches. Someone once told me that helping children is like thinking of them as lost in a corridor of doors. There are many ways to go and options around every corner. It's your job to guide them to the correct doorway and each strategy is a new doorway and if one doesn't work, find another. Our children rely on us to give them those chances and find the best options to succeed. It's our patience and support that allows them to fulfil their potential. I have a lot more content coming soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel on YouTube, share this video with fellow teachers and any trainee teachers who may find this useful. I do a monthly newsletter on my website that updates about all of the videos for the month and check out the description for my new Facebook community groups. Please share your favourite behaviour approaches in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.